want to waste your money on trash like me and buy me a drink, you may. <laughs> Go. Hey guys, I'm Shout007. Woo! That's her name. And uh, I'm known for voicing Twilight Sparkle. And uh, yeah, I'm so great at beer to fuck shit up. <laughs> We went too far. Yeah! Mean Girls! Woo! I'm not even drunk and I'm fucking up. So the first scene is from Mean Girls. It's a lot of feeling scene. So for this one, Yay. we've got Katie is going to be Fluttershy, and that's going to be voiced by Kate Bug. Gretchen is going to be Rarity, and that's going to be I Am Shadow. Karen is Rainbow Dash, who's going to be voiced by myself. Mrs. Norberry is Twilight, and that's going to be I Am Shadow. The principal is Applejack, and that's going to be voiced by me. The assistant is Applejack. Bloom, and that's going to be voiced by Mag. Random Girl is going to be Sweetie Belle, and that's I Am Shadow. Heavy Flow is going to be Derpy, and that's going to be Mag. Wheelchair Bitch is going to be Scootaloo, and that's going to be Kate Bug. Smiles and Hugs is Pinky, and that's Mag. Ian is Spike, and that's Kate Bug, and Narrator is narrating this one. So let's begin. And thus it begins. You guys suck at clapping, do it again. Uh, uh, Katie Heron and her frenemies known as the Plastics wrote a book about their high school classmates saying all manner of nasty things about them. When Katie betrayed the head of the Plastics, Regina, she got back at her by publishing the Burn Book, as it was called, for all the school to see, adding a page about herself so it would, not, so it would seem like she wasn't involved in the writing of it. The girls of the school had a knockdown, drag out fight over the burn book in the hallways of the school until the principal and some teachers corralled all of the girls into the gymnasium. Katie was one of the last to enter the gym, and she internally monologues about the looks she was getting from the girls. Have you ever walked up to people and realized they were just talking about you? Have you ever had it happen 60 times in a row? I have. Katie takes her seat, and the principal addresses the girls. Never in my 14 years as an educator have I seen such behavior. And from young ladies, I've got parents calling me on the phone asking if some pony got shot. I had to cancel your spring fling. The crowd, get, the crowd of girls gasps in horror. I'm not going to do that because we already paid the fucking DJ. <laughs> but don't think I'm not taking this book seriously. Coach Carr fled the school property. Twilight's been accused of selling drugs. <laughs> Now what young ladies in this grade need is an attitude makeover, and you're gonna fucking get it. Right now, I don't care how fucking long it takes, I will keep you here all night. Oh, we, we can't keep them past four? We'll keep, I'm gonna keep you here till four then, fuck it. I like when Applejack talks. Now what we're... <laughs> I'm, just, I'm adding extra fucks. <laughs> Now what we're going to do is try to fix this the way that you, how you young ladies can relate to each other, okay? Lady to lady. Now who's here has got a lady problem that they like to talk about? A girl sitting in the front row raises her hand. Yes? Somebody wrote in that book that I'm lying about being a virgin just because I use super jumbo tampons? But I can't help it if I've got a heavy flow and a white set vagina. And here we go. Yeah, fuck it, I can't do this. Twilight, you're fucking successful and intelligent and a Mary Sue fucking fixes. <laughs> <laughs> there has to be something that you can say to these young ladies, something that will help them with their self-esteem. It's not a self-esteem problem that I think they're all pretty pleased with themselves. <sighs> okay. Mrs. Miss Norberry talks to the girls for a few minutes until she gets an idea on how they might settle their differences. Okay, everybody up. The scene changes to show the room of girls standing in front of a small podium where a line of girls holding handwritten apologies waited to take their place on the stage. They would read out the apology before trust falling into the crowd, which was a symbolic way of the girls accepting their apologies. Miss Norberry had us write out apologies to people that we heard in our lives. Apple Bloom, I'm sorry I called you a gap tooth bitch. <laughs> <laughs> with a wheelchair.
wheelchair rolls onto the platform. Sweebel, I don't hate you because you're fat. You're fat because I hate you. <laughs> she turns and falls back into the crowd, knocking over a few girls who were crushed under the weight of her wheelchair. Good job, Sweebel. Yeah. Oh, no. I just wish we could all oh, no. get along like we used to in middle school. I wish we could, I could bake a cake. <laughs> Do you even go to the school? No. I just have a lot of feelings. <laughs> okay, go home. I'm sorry that ponies are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular, darling. I mean, I am the type of pony that every pony, every pony should know. <laughs> The crowd of girls, unamused by Gretchen's arrogance, steps back, leaving only Karen to catch her when she trust falls. The pair go crashing to the ground while Miss Norberry and the principal rush in to make sure they're okay. Oh my, Celestia, jeez. Okay, walk it off, walk it off. Okay, that hurts. They're okay. NC. <laughs> The Godfather. We are doing the make him an offer he can't refuse scene. Oh. Oh. But Don is going to be Granny Smith, and that's going to be voiced by Mag. Johnny Fontaine is going to be Bright Mac, and that's going to be voiced by Wildcard. And I am Shadow is narrating this one. Yeah. <laughs> In 1945, at his daughter Connie's wedding, Vito Corleone hears requests in his role as the godfather, the dawn of New York crime family, Johnny Fontaine. A famous singer and Vito's godson seeks Vito's advice. Oh, shit. We <laughs> <laughs> had one job, you need right, that. All right, Good all right, job, here. Yeah, okay, relax. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I don't know what to do. My voice is... It's weak. It's weak. Anyway, uh, well, sorry, I slipped into, into McCree there for a second. So. <laughs> it's high now. Anyway, if I had this part of the picture, you know, it, it puts me right back on top again. But this, uh, this pony out there, he won't give it to me. The head of the studio. What's his name? <laughs> A gigantic piece of shit. <laughs> I'm sorry, I mean Waltz. Waltz. He, he won't give it to me. And uh, he says there's no chance. No chance. Shit. Oh shit, I have another line. <laughs> A month ago, he bought the movie. <laughs> Shut up! <laughs> <laughs> you relax up there in the front row. <laughs> a month ago, he bought the movie rights to this book, a bestseller, and the main character is a guy just like me. Uh, I wouldn't even have to ask. Just be myself. Oh, Granny. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. Well, you can't act like a John Corleone slaps Johnny across the face. Oh, harder, Granny. You know how much I mean that. Big sisters of incest. He'll make you so run. What's the matter with you? Is this how you turned out? A Hollywood when you kill the cries like a woman? <laughs> can I do? What can I do? What is it? Nonsense. Ridiculous. Corleone's firstborn, Sonny, enters the room. You spend time with your family? Granite, real quick question. Have you had your meds today? Because <laughs> you're kind of more fucking crazy than usual. <laughs> sure, it's you think you end up dead. <laughs> sure I, I do. This. I spend time with my family. Good, because a man who don't spend time with his family can never be a real man. Don Corleone calls over Johnny. Come here. You look terrible. I want you to I want you to rest a while, and in a month from now, these, uh, these Hollywood big shots gonna give you what you want. Don't tell me what to do, you stupid bitch. 
I'm sorry, I misspoke. I mean, it's too late. They start shooting in a week. I'm gonna make him an offer. He can't refuse. And if you get all about these nonsense, I want you to leave it all to me. All right, I'm going to go outside and clop. <laughs> Johnny exits the room and clops. Hey! Woo! And that see. Boy, <laughs> all right, let's see what the what's going to ruin next. Man, I, I like this director's cut of The Godfather. This is good. <laughs> the next scene is from Superbad. We're doing the McLovin scene. <laughs> so for this scene, we have Ian is going to be Apple Bloom. That's Kate Bug. Seth is Sweetie Belle. That's going to be voiced by M. Shadow. Fogel, or McLovin himself, is going to be Scootaloo. And that's going to be Magpie. And I am narrating this one. Seth and Ian are two high school seniors who lament their virginity and poor social standing. Best friends since childhood. I'll be right back. What the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> I am narrating, you motherfucker. <laughs> you are dead to me. <laughs> Real conversions. Are you going to piss in the closet? Just pee in the bucket, you dumbass. <laughs> There's a bottle up there. <laughs> to different colleges. After the boys both promise two separate girls that they will bring alcohol to a party later that night, a friend of theirs, Fogel, offers it to get a fake ID to help get or help purchase them alcohol. After school, Ian and Seth await, wait for Fogel. What are we supposed to tell the girls that they couldn't do the one thing we were promised because we're dickless incompetent? <laughs> now we're never going to vote because they used tampon, Scootaloo. How are we going to Darth Mouth? Shipper brains. All right. How else can we get liquor from over there? <laughs> you guys suck. Seth and Ian turn around to see Fogel running after them. Scoots, where are you been, man? You almost gave me a goddamn heart attack. Let me see it. You Can't pussy out or well. what? No, no, man. I got it. It's flawless. Check it. Fogel reaches into his pocket and pulls out a fake ID. Evan gra or Ian grabs it. All right, let's see. Hawaii. All right, well, that's, that's good. It's hard to trace, I guess. Wait, you changed your name to McLovin? <laughs> yeah. McLovin? What kind of stupid name is that, Scootaloo? Why are you trying to be an Irish R&B singer? <laughs> no, they, they let you pick any name you want when you go down there. So you landed on McLovin? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was between that or Muhammad. Why the fuck would it be between that or Muhammad? <laughs> Why not just pick a common name like a normal person? <sighs> Muhammad is the most commonly used name on Earth. Read a fucking book for once. School, have you ever actually met... School, have you actually fucking met anyone named Muhammad? Have you actually ever met a guy named McLovin? No, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Were you successful? No. I had to take no. a wicked piss. All right, all right, all right, go, all go. Right. All right. No, that's why you pick a dumb fucking name. Jesus. Fuck you, fuck you too. Give me that. All right, you look like a future pedophile right. on the that's, 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 oh, that's you. Uh, well, whatever. Give me that. Fuck that. <laughs> Your pedophile in this picture, number one. <laughs> number two, does he have the first name? Just says McLovin. <laughs> what? One name? One name? Who are you, Seal? Seal, dude, this ID says you're 25 years old. Why wouldn't you just pick 21, man? <sighs> Sweetie Belle, listen up, ass face. Every day, hundreds of kids go into the liquor store with their fake IDs, and every single one says 
Rangers are 21. How many 21 year olds do you think are in this town? It's called a fucking strategy, alright? <laughs> alright, let's stay calm, okay? Let's not lose our heads. It's a fine idea. It's gonna work. It's passable, okay? Um, I mean, this isn't terrible. I mean, it's up to you, Skulu. This guy's going to think, here's another kid with a fake ID, or here's McLovin, the 25-year-old Hawaii organ donor, okay? <laughs> What's it gonna be? Vogel takes a deep breath. I am McLovin. <laughs> yeah, you are. They walk off into the staff parking lot and see. Anybody else get kind of a chub from this? Alright, the next scene is from The Exorcist. We are doing what an excellent day for an exorcism scene. So for this one. Karis is going to be Spike, and that's going to be voiced by Kate Bug. The Demon is going to be Orchard Blossom, and that's going to be voiced by Narrator. And Magpie is narrating this one. <laughs> Alright, this is a horror film, so everyone shut up. Yeah. <laughs> Serious, we need the ass. Shut the fuck up. Turn the lights. Okay. Fuck you. After, it's shut your face. Sorry. <laughs> After a young girl named Reagan has started showing signs of a possible psychosis, Father Karras begins to believe that she may be possessed by an evil entity. After praying and ruling out his options, he decides to meet with Reagan or the demon in her room to talk. Oh, mercy! What an excellent day for an exorcist! <laughs> <laughs> Karis pulls out a tape recorder and props a microphone on her bed near her. Karis sits on the chair or on the table on a chair next to her wardrobe. You like that? Intensely. But well, wouldn't that drive you out of Big Mac? Well, it would bring us together. You and Big Mac? You and us. <laughs> the nice, <laughs> the nice den drawer again. flies open on its own. Did you do that? Uh-huh. Harris pushes the drawer back in. Do it again. In time. No, now. In time. But Briot, Mirabile did too, don't you agree? Karis presses record on the tape recorder. I thought did you say? You speak Latin? Ego te absolvo. Oh man, I'm gonna butcher this. Uh quad nomen mine est? Bonjour. Quad nomen mine est? La plume de la matante. The what? demon laughs fully and mockingly. Mockingly. How long are you planning to stay in Big Mac? Until he rots at last in the ground. Karis pulls out a small vial of water. Oh, what's that? Piss! Yeah. Holy water! <laughs> Karis moves to the end of the bed. Oh, you keep it away! Karis uncaps the vial and now sprinkles its contents over Reagan. Instantly, Reagan writhes in pain and terror. Oh! Oh! Oh, no! Have mercy! It burns! Oh! It burns! Oh! Oh! No! It's Reagan! Reagan's head falls back onto the pillow as she rolls her head from side to side, shouting out indistinct gibberish. Oh! Im, it's so evig! <laughs> Karis is intrigued and sits on the bed beside her. He moves the microphone up to her mouth and listens. You dumb and numerosity, ah, you are Isa, to serum as you am, even so infant, Miriam, Miriam. Who are you? Virgin. Oh. We're doing the Are You a Virgin scene. No. Oh no. So, oh no. So this scene, Andy the Virgin is going to be Celestia. Yeah. Yeah. And that's going to be voiced by Ivan Shadow. Kel is going to be Tree Hugger. 
Joker, and that's going to be voiced by Mag. Jay is going to be Rainbow Dash, and that's going to be voiced by myself. David is going to be Fluttershy, and that's going to be voiced by Kate Bug. And Wildcard is narrating this one. Boom. Do you need to go to the bathroom before you do it? <laughs> uh, <laughs> fuck you, boss. <laughs> Sorry, I've right, right, had let, a couple. Let's, let's do this shit. All right, hey, so some asswipe is a single guy who works at a big box store. Living alone, 40 year old Andy spends his free time playing video games and attending brony forums where he complains about things that don't really fucking matter. Oh! Who would even do that, right? Despite his age, Andy has never had sex, big surprise. And up until this point, his friends were unaware of that fact. During a poker game, the truth finally comes out, despite Andy's attempts to lie. I dated this girl uh, for a while, and she was a really nasty freak. She just loved to get down with sex all the time. <laughs> she was like... Any time of day, she was like, yeah, let's go. I'm so nasty, and I'd be nailing her. Oh, shit! <laughs> She'd be like, oh, you're nailing me. Cool. <laughs> Kill me. <laughs> she talked dirty to you? Oh, uh, she loved to dirty talk. <laughs> totally into it. Uh, She'd be like... Yeah, let's screw. Let's, uh, I wanna fuck. <laughs> God, it was so dirty. She'd be like, Me so horny, me love you long time. <laughs> so, uh, so, so what were the titties like? <laughs> ah, describe her. <laughs> Count. Who's Count? Mag. Oh, she said it. Oh, oh yeah, uh, she had great tits. <laughs> no, 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 I mean, like, detailed. Like, did she have, like, you know, the little tiny pink, tiny little nipples? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, go on. Oh, I, do you want me to, like, deep throat it? <laughs> And it's uh, and you uh, you feel it, and it's like a bag of sand when you're touching it. Bag of sand? You know what I mean. Uh, why don't we just play? Why don't you just deal the cards? What are you talking about? Have you ever like felt a breast before? <laughs> yes. I touched a guy's balls at Hebrew school once. Dude, it's totally not a big deal if you fuck guys. It's cool, I'm cool with it. I've got friends that fuck guys in jail. <laughs> no, I'm not gay. No, I forked a lot of women in my day. You forked? Hold up, hold up, hold up. Yo, I got a question asked. Are you a virgin? What? Are you a virgin? Yeah, not since I was ten. It all, like, makes sense. Comically, you've kind of always been a virgin. I, I am... Shut up! How does that happen? He's a fucking virgin. I knew it. This makes so much sense, man. Look, he's a virgin. You guys are hilarious. Alright, come on. Don't be mean. I'm trying to help a partner out. I'm trying to see if you if you want to get laid, dude. I totally understand what the fuck is going on. You guys 
are so up your asses. From now on, your dick is my dick. I'm gonna help you get some pussy. <laughs> This next scene, this next scene is something. This is this is the one. Oh no! This is the one. Oh dear! The next scene is from Brokeback Mountain. Here we go. And and to make it even better. Big old dog. So Enos is going to be Big Mac, and that's going to be voiced by narrator Jack. Braeburn, and that's gonna be wild card. And Kate is gonna be narrating this one. Yeah. <laughs> Kate! Shut up! Uh, <laughs> Let's the the fuck up and alright, alright, right, let's let's start. Let's start. Fucking cut mouths, Jesus. Alright. In 1963, Rodeo Cowboy Jack I gotta channel my gay ranch. <laughs> Rodeo Cowboy Jack Twist and Ranch Hand Ennis Del Mar are hired by Rancher Joe, I can't pronounce your name, as sheep herders in Wyoming. One night on Brokeback Mountain, Jack makes a drunken pass at Ennis that is eventually reciprocated. Though Ennis marries his longtime sweetheart, Alma, and Jack marries a fellow rodeo rider, the two men keep up their tortured and sporadic affair over the course of 20 years. After one of these visits comes to a close, the pair of lovers discuss August, when they can see each other again, when Ennis drops a bombshell. There's something I've been meaning to tell you about. It's likely November when I, is when I can come out here again, after we ship, stock, and before winter feeding starts again. November? Well, what the hell ever happened to August? Well... Christ, Dennis! You know, you had a fucking week to say some little word about this. Oh, man. Why is it when... <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Why is it when... We're always in the friggin' cold. We ought to go south where it's warm. You know, we ought to go to Mexico. Mexico? Hell, Jack, you know me. About all the traveling I ever done was around a coffee fuck pot. Coffee fuck looking for a handle. Grab my handle. Come on, come on, Jack, lighten up on me. We can hunt no in November, kill us a nice elk. I can try I can try if I get Don Rose Cabin again. We had a good time that year, didn't we? There ain't never enough time. Never enough. You know, friend, this is a goddamn bitch of an unsatisfactory situation. You used to come away easy, and now it's like seeing the Pope, though I do like seeing you come. They <laughs> gonna <laughs> fuck. <laughs> Thanks, Shadow. Shad, that now work, huh? And in my earlier days, I just quit the jobs. I mean, you you forget what it's like being broke all the time. You ever hear of a child support? And I'll tell you, I can't quit this one. I can't get the time off. It's hard enough getting this time. The trade-off was August. You got a better idea? I did once. Uh, it's you. It's me? Yeah. It's you, lover. Oh, you did once. My pages got stuck together. You did once. Well, have you been to Mexico, Jack? Hmm? Is I hear what they got in Mexico for boys like you? Hell yes, I've been to Mexico. No! Hell, thank you, thank you. Alright, go fuck yourselves. <laughs> I like the fun. Is that a fucking problem? I'm gonna tell you this one time, Jack fucking twist, and I ain't fooling her. What I don't know, all them things I don't know can get you killed if I come to know them. I ain't joking. Yeah, well, try this one, and I'll say it just once. Go ahead. Tell you what, we could have had a good life together, fucking real good life, had us a place of our own, but you didn't want it, Ennis, so what we got now is Brokeback Mountain. Everything's been on that. That's all we got, boy, fucking all. So I hope you know that it, shit, so that if you don't ever know, shit, I fucked that line up. I'm trying to get That's all we got, boy, fucking all, so I hope that you know that if we, shit, God <laughs> You have, you got this, you got this.
got this. Oh. I'm sorry, baby. Give me one second. <laughs> take, take three. This happens in the booth a lot. That's all we got, boy. Fucking all. So I hope you know that if you don't never know the rest. God damn it. <laughs> You're very succinct, that. but I love you. You count the damn few times that we've been together in nearly 20 years. Measure the short fucking leash you keep me on, and then you ask me about Mexico. And you tell me you'll kill me for something, for needing something I don't ever hardly get. You got no idea how bad it gets. And I'm not you. I can't make it on a couple of high altitude fucks once or twice a year. You are too much for me, Big Mac, you son of a horse and bitch. I wish I knew how to quit you. Hey! He's at it. Why don't you? Why don't you let me be, huh? Because of you, Jack, and I'm like this. Nothing, nowhere. Shit. Come here, let me hug Yeah. yeah. Jack notices that Ennis is crying and goes to comfort him with a hug, but Ennis violently shoves him away. Get the fuck off me! <laughs> <laughs> Jack? That's not what you said last time. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love this already. So Jack, I'm really going to fuck. <laughs> Hit the road, Jack. Uh, Jack tries again and wrestles with Ennis until Ennis finally lets him hold him as he sinks to the ground in tears. It's all right. It's all right. Damn you, Big Mac. I just can't stand this anymore, Brayburn. End scene. <laughs> all right. The next scene is from Pulp Fiction. Ah! Oh, please. Oh, please. Oh, please. We are doing the Say What Again scene. Yeah. That's gonna be Mag. Jules is going to be Rainbow Dash. It's gonna be voiced by myself. Marvin is gonna be Cadence, and that's voiced by Kate Bug. Roger Yay! is Twilight, and that's gonna be voiced by I Am Shadow. And narrator is narrating this one. <laughs> Jules and Vincent have arrived at Brent's, Brent's apartment, where he's eating hamburgers with his associates. Yeah. Jules and Vincent are there to acquire a briefcase for their boss. Frankie Doodle. <laughs> Yo, Roger Seagulls! You know what we're here for? Roger nods his head. Hey, why don't you tell my boy here, Pinks, where you got this shit hit? It's over there under the... I don't remember you asking or asking you a goddamn thing! Mark instantly shuts up. Jules turns back to Roger. You were saying? It's under the cupboard. Vincent moves to the kitchen, reaches into the cupboard, pulling out a black snap briefcase. Vincent flips the two locks, opening the case. We can't see what's inside, but a small glow emits from the case. Vincent just stares at it, transfixed. We happy? No answer from the transfixed Vincent. Pinks! Vincent looks up at Jules. We happy? Vincent closes the case. Look, I'm sorry, I didn't get your name. I got yours, uh, Vincent, right? But I never got yours. My name's Pitt, and you ain't talking your ass out of this shit. I just want you to know how sorry we we're about how fucked up things got between us and Mr. and Cranky Doodle. We got to this thing with the best intentions. As Brett talks, Jules takes out his gun and shoots Roger once in the chest. He yeah. smiles to himself. Brett has just shit his pants. He's not crying or whimpering, but he's so full of fear, it's as if his body is imploding. Oh, I'm sorry! Did I break your concentration? I didn't mean to do that. Please, continue! You were saying something about best intentions? Brett can't say a word. I can turn my page. <laughs> <laughs> What's the matter? Were you finished? Well, allow me to retort! What does Cranky Doodle look like? Brett still can't speak. <laughs> Jules snaps, savagely tipping the card table over, removing the only barrier between himself and Brett. Brett now sits in a lone chair before Jules, like a political prisoner in front of an interrogator. What country are you from? What? What ain't no country I've ever heard of? They speak English and what? What? English, motherfucker, do you speak it? Yes! Doodle looks like! What? 
Jules takes out his 45 and points it right at Brad. Say what again! Say what again! I dare ya! I double dare you, you motherfucker! Say what again one more goddamn time! Red Woo! Says, Woo! Well, he's... He's black. <laughs> Go on! And he's... He's bald. Does he look like a bitch? What? <laughs> Jules rolls his eyes and shoots Brett in the shoulder. Brett screams, breaking into a shaking, trembling spasm in the chair. Does he look like a bitch? No! Then why are you trying to fuck him like a bitch, Sally? <laughs> I didn't! Yes, you did, Sally. Yes, you did. You tried to fuck him. And Cranky Doodle don't like his noodle doodle by anybody but Mrs. Doodle. <laughs> at the same time on the sitting Celestia. And scene. of their relationships, or different relationships. We're talking, talking about fucking. Don't interrupt my line. So what do you do with these women? Do you just get up out of bed and leave? <laughs> sure. Well, explain to me how you do it. What do you say? Uh, you'd say you have an early meeting, early haircut, or a squash game. You don't play squash. Bitch, you don't fucking know me. <laughs> I know more than you think I know. <laughs> anyway, back to the script. They don't know that they just met me. That's disgusting. I know. I feel terrible. You know, I'm so glad I never got involved with you. I would have just ended up being some woman you had to get up out of bed and leave at 3 o'clock in the morning and clean your hand irons, and you don't even have a fireplace. Not that I noticed. Why are you getting so upset? This is not about you. Yes, it is. You are a human affront to all women, oh. and I am a, I, I am a woman pony. <laughs> hey, I don't feel great about this, but I don't hear any pony complaining. Of course hey, not. Ladies. You're out of the door too fast. Move the page faster. <laughs> I thought you wanted me to take it slow. Stick to the script. 
<laughs> I think they have an okay time. How do you know? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> what do you mean, how do I know? I know. Because they... Yes, because they... And how do you know God that they really... <laughs> what are you saying? That they fake orgasm? It's possible. Get out of here. Why? Most women at one time or another have faked it. Well, they haven't faked it with me. Oh dear, here it goes. How do you know? Because I know. Oh, right. That's right, I forgot. You're... A man. Stallion. <laughs> what is that supposed to mean? Nothing. It's just that all men are sure it never happened to them, and that most women at one time or another have done it. So, you do the math. You don't think I can tell the difference? No. Get out of here! to win an Emmy. Here we go. <laughs> but in all seriousness, are you okay? Uh, oh god. Uh, oh god. Uh, 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 oh god. Oh god. Oh god. Oh yes. Casually goes back to eating her meal. Oh, I have what she's having. <laughs> 